goodness gracious, it's another stream day. Welcome, everyone. I don't know if you know, but today's a very special day because it's not just me on today. We have our very own Tone Master General, the inimitable, the inevitable Quain. Quain, feel free to unmute and uh, say hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. 大家好. All hello. right. I'm direct. Yeah. All right. Welcome to the stream, Quain. Thank you. How? Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, Lucy commanded me to use this quasi RP to in honor of her and the fact that I'm in London. So yeah, that's going to be my accent today. All right. Very nice. Um, chat. This is our our first. Um, well, I think actually our second. Or this is our second audio call in episode. So I will ask you: Are the levels good? Does do I sound as loud as Quain? Roughly, is anything? Um, is everything all good with you? I'll, we'll just uh, wait here for a yeah. few minutes while we check that I'll and um, say something. And yeah, does I uh, do I sound good? Sounds balanced. Okay, thank you, Kobe. Excellent. All right. So maybe then we can tell you a little bit about the premise of the stream. Today we are going to be working on a new conlang for our little owl and chicken universe. Um, some people might ask, why so many, you know, separate conlangs? Why so many families? If we're going to fill out this world, we're going to need a lot of language families. So I don't think, uh, I don't think we should really ever stop. In a way, the more the merrier. So we're going to be uh, building a new conlang today, and the general premise of this conlang will be tone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots of them. Lots of tone. We're gonna. Yeah. It's the tone explosion. That's what it is. Yeah. All right. So I guess why don't we welcome YouTube, and then we'll just jump right in to conlanging. Sound good? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. YouTube, welcome. We have a very special guest today. We're going to conlang with the one, the only, the Tone Master, Quain. Quain, say hello. 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 Hi, YouTube. YouTube. We are so happy to have you here. But I think what we're going to do now is just jump right into the conlanging. We have, lo and behold, a spreadsheet. So off to the side with me. And here we go. All right. So. Cracking the knuckles, getting limber. All right, what are we gonna do? What's our first step, Quain? What are we looking at? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, tones, maybe. All right, let's <laughs> let's take a little. Let's make our our little inspiration list here. So, inspiration number one, tone. Yeah. Uh, inspiration number two, tone. I think we have to give the first. The first three yeah. slots and to tone. Like three, four, five, yeah, whatever. Like yeah. it's just we're just gonna tones. have to yeah. Okay, it wasn't oh. smart enough to do that, but <laughs> well, you know <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We got tone. Okay, so within the domain, the kingdom of tone, um what kind of it, well, Quain, are all tone systems kind of the same or are there are there big differences between tone systems? Hmm, there are actually a, a, a lot of differences, actually. So, um, yeah, there are simpler tone systems, there are complex tone systems. So, in general, like, the, the number of tones can range from just two, high or low, to, like, 12, 15, which is a crazy number, I know. But, like, is yeah, and that's just the number. Uh, so, for the type of tones you got, level tones, which is ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So like you maintain a whole uh, pitch like throughout the whole syllable. And you have contour tones, which are ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, like things like that. These are contour tones. So you move through so, different yeah. pitches through the syllable. Yeah, you move through different pitches. So um, it's like typologically is uh, in general, uh, much more common to have level tones than contour tones. And to have, when you have contour tones, you must, uh, not must, yeah, <laughs> not everything is a must. 
Uh, so you uh, mostly have uh, level tones accompanying them. So yeah. Uh, so in other words, if you have level tones, you can just have level tones, like most uh, West and South Southern African languages do. Uh, but you can also have quantitones, which um, as most Chinese languages do. So, so, yeah, so would, a, would it be fair to say then, in general, uh, contour tones imply level tones, but not the other way around? Mm -hmm, within in a general, language? But there are exceptions. For example, my dialect, my infamous dialect, which only has four contour tones, no level tones, which is a beast. So, yeah. Interesting. So, so in general, we, we see this tendency where if a language has contour tones, it also tends to have level tones. Asterisk, mm -hmm. some exceptions may apply. Yeah. Like everything in linguistics, right? Yes. Pretty much. Um, okay, so then what what route do you, what route do you want to take uh, in this, Quinn? Do you want to go down more of the, the level tone only route or more of a contour tone conline? Hmm. I think we can like spice it a little bit up, like with uh, some contour tones, but relatively simple contour tones, if you know what I mean. Okay. So there are contour tones which are just rising and falling, right? So these are the two. Uh, basic type of uh, basic types of contour tones. So ah is the rising one, and ah is the falling one. So everybody just like use your ears and try to distinguish them. Okay. Uh, so ah is rising, and ah is falling. Uh, what what do I mean by they are simpler? Is because um, these are like you start from one place and you just go to another place. That's uh, a simple like contour. You don't right? have to uh, sort of hit yeah. a, a second destination in the middle of your journey from the start to the end. Right, but some more complex ones that um, like I will demonstrate now. So uh, like, ah, that's a, ah, that's a rising falling tone, right? So in that case, you have to basically hit three spots. That's the complex complexity of it, basically. So uh, most, I mean, in general, like most contour tones are, you only have a starting point and uh, an ending point, right? And that's the your simpler, quote unquote, simpler uh, contour tones. Uh, but yeah, let's not get on this stream. Let's not get into the like way complex stuff. Okay. Let's okay. start with some, yeah, some. Um, I would say one rising, one falling is a safe bet plus some level tones. That's the way to go. Okay, so we're looking at something with, let's just say, rising, falling, and some level tones. Great. Um, all right, so the language will obviously have more than just a tone system. We're going to have to put in a uh, some consonants and vowels as well, so we'll have to we'll have to make some decisions about that. Do you have any strong feelings there, Quinn, or, or shall we? Hmm. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, we we mentioned earlier that uh, you didn't actually do aspirations, did you? No, I have, which, I don't think we've done any yeah. aspiration on stream. So aspiration, which is one of my strong suits, because I one I love it too. I just yeah, I love it. So basically, well, that's that's a good enough reason. Um, yeah. I want to just pay attention to the chat here because we had some questions come in. Um, oh yeah. Let's see. Uh, Kobe O'Brien asks, which language is it that has just four contour tones? So, oh, uh, Queen, this is okay. your 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 native dialect, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my hometown is called Dalian, uh, Dalian. which, yeah, Dalian. Uh, your your tones are on point. Uh, so it's on the northern, it's on the peninsula on the northern coast of China, basically. And yeah, that's where I'm from, which belongs to a branch of Mandarin called Jiao Liao Mandarin. Uh, you don't have to know that, but yeah, it's a very particular language uh, that only has four. Um, contour tones. So, yeah. All right. And let's see if there are any other questions. Um, oh, yeah, we had a question about pitch accent. I don't know if we want to open that can of worms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another, a whole another door. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Why don't we 
keep pitch accent to the side for now because the question of how to define pitch accent is kind of uh, yeah. complicated and actually a bit controversial, I would say. Yeah, it's like a like personally, it's a spectrum, right? It's like from from tone to non tone. But yeah, we'll get into that later. I think. Yeah, I think that we'll have to build up a bit to that. Um, yeah. uh, Logan uh, curiously asks, "What is going to be our tone bearing unit? Syllables, hmm. mori, vowels, sonorants." Yeah, let's just say vowels for now. Yeah, okay. just to keep it. Yeah. So vowel tone bearing unit. Yeah. Unless we want like some kind of syllabic consonant, which I'm not against, but yeah, let's see. And so if we're going towards a language that's more like the sort of Southeast and East Asian style mm -hmm. tone systems, yeah. would it not make sense to have syllables be our, our tone bearing unit? Oh, you mean if, yeah, that, that depends if you analyze like uh, diphthongs and triphthongs as like glides or vowels. Okay, right? yes, so, right, yeah. that's true. Okay, so, so let's, yeah, let's just say syllables to be like e the easiest, yeah. That will probably solve some yeah, problems some for us problems. later on. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Um, we're hearing, yeah, Lucy p mentions uh, pitch accent trauma. Um, <laughs> Logan um, from before says that pitch accent is a scam. Uh, so you can see what I mean, the, the controversy yeah. about pitch accent. Controversial. Yeah. Um, Sparsh uh, Jory asks, what would be the difference between syllables bearing tones and vowels bearing tones? I think um, th this probably came in before, uh, Quain, what you just said, but I think in a nutshell, it would be if you have a vowel, if you have two vowels within a syllable, um, if you have vowels as the tone bearing unit, that you're going to have different results than if if the syllable is the tone bearing unit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, I think we have some good inspiration here. Uh, we want aspiration. Uh, what kind of constant size or inventory size do we want for our constants and our vowels? Hmm. What do you think? Do you have an idea? Well, there is uh, a claim going out there in the tabological literature that more complexity of tone system correlates with larger inventories in general. Um, it's a bit, I think it's a bit hard to say for sure because there aren't that many um, independent examples of, of uh, tone systems that are not related to each other you know, in the same language family or, or growing up uh, closely together. Yeah. But, but there is that correlation out there in the literature that uh, maybe we can, we can either go along with or just buck the trend on. Yeah. What does the chat think? Like, yeah. Chat. What do you think? Yeah, let's, like, let's, what do you say? Do we want a, a minimalistic uh, consonant inventory? Let's start with consonants, a minimalistic consonant inventory, or do we want a big, beautiful, uh, a big, beautiful constant inventory. And then the same question regarding vowels, but we'll, we'll let you answer the constant one first. Yeah. Um, we are getting some requests in for lateral fricative. Mm, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Okay. Love it. Lateral fricative. We're getting in a request for some front rounded vowels. That could be fun. Yeah. Oops. I put seven twice. Um, we we're getting people. We're getting a lot of um, a lot of responses saying minimalistic, minimalistic, minimalistic inventories. Mm. Um, but what what about what if we compromise and make the one of the two constant or vowel inventories minimalistic and the other one beautiful and uh, yeah, that's a good idea actually. Yeah. So we have already done. We've already done a minimalistic consonant inventory a few times. So why don't we do minimalistic vowel inventory and uh, a profusion of consonants? Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Okay, so let's let's say minimalistic vowels and lots of consonants. All right, so the last thing I think phonologically speaking um, will be to talk about syllable structure. Yes. And um, 
this is a case where there is some more, uh, there have been correlations pointed out in the, in the typological literature about um, syllable structure, complex syllable structure, um, not being common, not commonly occurring with tone systems. So rather tone systems tend to occur with simpler syllable structures uh, typologically. Yeah. Is, uh, is that, has that been your experience as well, Quain? Yeah, I generally agree. Yeah, like if we survey like uh, the East and South, uh, Southeastern Asian like tonal languages, they are pretty like, yeah, uh, so uh, they have pretty simple syllabic structures in general. Uh, and African languages, um, yeah, especially like Southern African tonal languages, they are um, CVCV basically. So, yeah. Okay, so then we're looking at something like a sil simple syllable structure with lots of consonants and a minimalistic vowel inventory. Now, how we're going to fit front vowels, front rounded vowels into a minimalistic vowel inventory? Mm -hmm. That's going to be yeah. interesting. That's going to be an interesting challenge. Um, I think we have everything we need phonologically. Um, what about some inspiration, you know, morphosyntactically? What sort of language are we looking at here? Do we want something that's that's super analytic, um, like we have with the Sakrat languages, or do we want to do something different? Hmm. Yeah, interesting question. Because typologically, like, it usually correlates with like a uh, an more analytic. Um, in general, I would say, yeah, but not necessarily the case. There are some like North uh, Central American tonal languages that have. Um, a lot of morphology. So yeah, I don't know. I kind of want to put a little bit of morphology. Yeah, into me this too. Language. So we you don't know? end up yeah. retreading the same road. So why don't we say um, our constraint will be not totally analytic. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I think we have enough um, enough there. Uh, let's let's start making some charts. Okay. Um, okay, so let's get let's get some constants going. Ugh, I've made this hard. I'm gonna put the cut, put our inspiration over there, and now we have lots of room. So why don't we say consonants up here? Just oh. put, put a few. Um, just um, liquid. Just call it yeah. yeah. Great. And then we'll put something like, I don't know, how, how, did we say minimalistic? No, we said lots of constants. Okay, so we're gonna have a lot yeah. of coronal places, I'm assuming, but let's yeah. just say, um, and, and beyond. Yeah, and um, beyond. We, we, yeah, we, I don't know how many we're gonna need back there. And we'll probably need at least two coronal places. Um, all right. So let's fit in what we've uh, what we've promised. Yeah. So far, um, we've promised a ladder uh, of fricatives. Oh uh, yeah. Which should technically, I guess, be their own uh, row, but uh, why not? Lateral fricatives. I need to get my IPA chart open. Excuse me one second. Get that over here. Go to the full version. And feel free, Quain, to just plop in whatever you like. Oh, yeah. Um, I can allow some basics. Yes. And I think it would be cool to have a gap in our in our inventories. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna put the uh, aspirates in here. Yeah, the aspiration. Yeah. Hmm. Question: Do we want any sort of palatal stop or um, African? Actually, I think it would be cool to have um, like some sort of a post alveolar affricate. Um, exactly yeah. where we want that, I don't know. 
we could do i mean we could yeah. just we could do a ch like a ch and a ch uh, a ch and a ch an yeah. aspirated <laughs> yeah and, uh, yeah i realize that doesn't necessarily come through on audio um <laughs> That's All okay. Right. So a, a ch and a ch. Yeah. yeah. I can I can pronounce it with my native Mandarin knowledge. Okay, but, so we can yeah. put it like here. One thing I'd like is a like a, a s huh, an aspirated s. Oh, that's spicy. Yeah, that's the one in Korean. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That would be kind of fun. S huh. We could that's have fun. we could have a pair. Uh, yeah really like uh contrasting ta with sa that's kind of brutal but i like it sa and sa yeah cool it depends or yeah if if you have sa then just uh don't have ta because those two are gonna be a disaster wait 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 <laughs> could you write down the ones that you just said yeah the tsa tsh Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So no. No. Yeah. But yeah. No. So no. No. The and t. Then. Are we making these um, alveolar or dental? Mm. Either way, I have no preference. But yeah, huh. uh, maybe dental. Yeah. Dental. All right. So t, t, n, s, s, s. Ah. I know. Yeah. Na. It's a. Okay. Well, we did want a big, beautiful consonant inventory, so we're yeah, getting it. Yeah, we did. Um, okay. What else can we put in? I need to look at the chat. Oh, it's not yeah. nearly enough ah, screen okay. real estate. Um, okay. Yes. Aspiration. Ooh. Wow. Oh, sorry, Quinn. You were going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was reading chat. Okay, and, you're uh, you're reading chat too. I was just seeing yeah. um the comment from MZ uh, aspirated voiceless prenasalized contrast. Oh that, yeah. That would be kind of fun. Yeah. That isn't that something we did with a group B historical challenge. I think it I remember the prenasalized. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, we because we did have prenasalized stuff. Yeah. But... Well, we can put that in. Um let's see. Do we want to notate that? We can just do do it with a tie bar. So we could do this as an example. The, yeah. Um, and then I can put I'll put together the rest. Um, okay. Are you able to see quat? Uh, quat okay, chat, Quain. <laughs> Quatching. Oh, uh, syllable structure is, is real. Syllable yeah. structure I, is quad. real. Yeah, quad. <laughs> one of my um, one of my questions in for my for my orals um, in grad school was motivate the existence of syllable structure. And if uh -huh. I were a if I were a, a more cheeky person than I am, I would have just done a spoonerism like that. <laughs> Yeah, but that that was great. I I enjoyed quad. <laughs> well, I think we should put that in as a word. Yeah. Oh, quad. Okay. Yeah. More like quad, like as, with aspiration. Yeah, quad. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got. <laughs> Never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Okay. So then, okay. And I think. We should we should put in like cool. the yeah maybe and we can have a yeah a yeah and a wa I'll put yeah down here oh uh, yeah wa yeah um okay do we want no. any other fricatives oh okay you're on the nasals yeah do you want it do you want a nasal at the velar place uh I mean yeah <laughs> but i uh all right i, I feel like Nga is very asian sounding like in general well if we're gonna have prenasalized nga yeah i, I don't know if there's a typological implication there. so that contrast is 
unless we just like get rid of the nasals and have some like allophonic rolls to. Ooh. Isn't that right? Ooh. What if? What if the prenasalized stops and the nasals are in complementary distribution? Yes, that's yeah. exactly what I'm thinking about. Okay. So. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Um, let me put. I've lost. I've lost my IPA window. I've lost it. Oh no. Oh, I've lost it. All right. Um, okay. So then we're gonna put these in and let's put in parentheses the prenasalized stops because I yeah. think it's more natural to analyze. I mean, it'll depend on the precise uh, yeah, patterns, yeah, but I think they're more like complex phonetically. So yeah, that makes sense. And typologically rarer, so I. Yeah. Yeah, without seeing the data, this would be my analysis. <laughs> it's always great to make an analysis without seeing the data, right? Yeah, just be a linguist. Yep, you can do it too. So um, if we if we want uh, quat to be a word, um, we either need we're making some decisions about syllable structure. Oh yeah, because yeah, our first like official TM word is quat. So there's that. So let's let's write that down. So is now the question is, do we want it to be true, quat, quat, or do we want it to be a um, like a a, a, a labialized, uh, a labialized velar? Hmm. I feel like we've done that in protocol a bit yeah, recently. Yeah, so, so maybe this is evidence for our syllable structure, which is yeah, I uh, would say so. Yeah. Okay, so. Which will mean that we'll be able to have these um, semi vowels in the onset position. Or at least we'll have branching onsets, we'll have complex onsets with, with a semi vowel like this. Unless you want to well, analyze yeah. the what as part of the nucleus. Well, wa is a bit of a stretch, is it? So, like, yeah, I would rather analyze it as kwa rather than like two vowels. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, I think yeah, I think it would be. I think it would be too much, too 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 closely following like um, the Chinese linguistics, yeah, tradition to to do that. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. So this is our first word. Uh, chat, what's this word going to mean? This is your little assignment. Yeah. Um, so this tells us that we have at least C and then W, V, C, yeah. or at least T. Who knows if that, if there are other constants that can occur in these places, but at least those ones can. Okay, okay. So have quat be the name of the language. I think loud and clear, this is what we're, uh, okay. we're hearing. Just straight up agree. Yeah. Yeah. No Ch problem. Chat can get chaotic. This is true. I, maybe I'm, maybe we're at the point. Maybe we're, we're at the point of room where I can't just say chat do this because then there's just too much. There's just too much. Um, wow. Who'd have thought? Six months ago, I was sitting sitting here with like three people in the chat. Everyone, thank you. <laughs> you guys are great. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, okay, so quat is the name of this language. And a great. good name it is. The best things happen by accident on this stream. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. Birai, for example. <laughs> Birai. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I'd just like to give a shout out to, to Birai, who uh, is a meme who has become sentient on, on the yeah. Discord. So. I, it is if I were wearing a hat, I would doff it right now. I, you know, it would be cool if I could start wearing hats to the stream because then I could do more of those doffings, but the headphones get in the way. It's a trouble. Uh, All right, let's take a look at vowels. I don't know if we're done with consonants yet. Um, what's our inventory size? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Not that big. That's not particularly, yeah, particularly large. I think we yeah. need a little bit more. Um, yeah, but I'm just gonna uh, maybe yeah fricatives. Yeah, um, fricatives. Hukua. Let's have a hukua. And uh, what else? 
Mm. Uh, we could have a, a lateral affricate. Kla. Yeah, yeah. I saw somebody uh, suggesting that. Oh, okay, nice. Oh, yeah, Moon Truther. Yep, I see in the chat there. Kla. Credit where credits do. Okay. So um, do we want aspiration on that because that's going to be difficult, right? Yeah. <laughs> to distinguish. Oh, I mean, I'm. Ha we need to also start introducing some weird gaps. I think. Yeah. Maybe that's. So maybe one. just just tla, yeah, tla. or yeah, wh whatever. Like yeah, tla. Maybe the the aspirated one because that's the one that's uh, sort of like easier to pronounce tla. in a way. Okay. So yeah, because little... uh, tla and tla, tla is probably like more to the English. <laughs> anyone phonology. just anyone just listening to this is <laughs> like, what on earth? Ah, ah. It's, you know, it's tla yeah, versus Lucy, tla. Lucy can definitely put it into like intro. This is definitely like intro uh, worthy material. No shortage of that. All right. Okay. Um, we're getting, ooh, vowel roticity distinction. I don't know how that will play in with, with tone. Hmm. Interesting. The yeah, we can explore that if we want. Uh, uh, I think we still need more. Yeah. Uh, so far, we don't have any voiced fricatives. But That's true. Just, um, but we don't have any voiced obstruents either, except for the, uh, I mean, stops either because of the, except for the prenasalized ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a gap that hmm, interesting. seems more, seems to make sense. Um, I'll just write post alveolar here. Um, anything far back in the mouth? Farther beyond, beyond the hmm, velar? Beyond. Um, well, stop. Maybe because that's yeah. What I'm doing right now. Um, okay, so let's scoot that in a lot of stop. And what else? Um, oh. versus glottal fricative. Wait. Yeah, that makes sense, especially if we have about a that. aspiration. The quote versus a uh, distinction, which you know some languages do, but most don't. The voiced versus voiceless? No, no, no. H versus uh, ha. The H vela versus... versus glottal. Oh, yeah. Vela versus glottal. Yeah. I mean, there's no no shortage of languages that, that distinguish yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... Yeah. Beyond okay. that, so we, anything we, else? Uh, uh, a gap, maybe. A gap. No, yeah. No... no um, no labial or labial velar. Labial fricatives. Nothing. Or, yeah. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Uh, we're. I think we're gonna have a hard time making this a bountiful constant inventory unless we introduce some secondary articulation. Yeah. We could do the Irish slash Russian special. Oh dear. Which is for those who are are, are not aware is introducing. Um, Contrastive palatalization for basically everything, uh, or velarization. Um, in the case of Irish, palatal or, palatalized or velar. Um, for all consonants, we could do that. Mm. I, I I I tell from your hesitation that you're maybe not especially enthusiastic <laughs> about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you, it depends on your analysis, right? If you analyze it as like. Because we have quat, right? Mm -hmm. That that's our basis in a way. So mm -hmm. that's our guiding light. If, yeah. So if we have quat, we might have kya, and that's yeah. If you analyze it as like palatalization, like then why do you treat that specially, mm -hmm. but not quat, right? So right. And then what happens if you have palatalization with wa? Do you have quat? Yeah. Or do you yeah. do they coalesce yeah. into like cat or something like that? Yeah. And then we're just redoing Mandarin. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, so maybe not not palatalization, but maybe something. What else can we do? Yeah. What other secondary articulations can we? 
can we get? Well, maybe some other places of um. Wait, are, are there other places? Uh, we um, can. Wait. We can. Yeah. Break up the coronal. Even more. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, well. Yeah, because the palace hall seems a bit empty, you know.、Mm -hmm. But yeah, if we were to like keep them separate, we should add something to either one. I could see this cha cha having come from a palace hall in a an earlier stage. Yeah, because、um, it's kind of somewhat uncommon for things to hang out in palace hall for too long. I mean, yeah. It's not unheard of, but I think it's it's a bit of an unstable place of articulation. Yeah, but I mean, you know, like、Except、every for... almost yeah, almost every single Chinese languages have zhe and che, which are like alveolar palatal.、Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, then we could do something like. Hmm, we could do something like. A palatal nasal. I think I saw that in the chat come up. Yeah, yeah.、That's... Yeah. Why don't we do that and a palatal lateral? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sold. <laughs> Let's、uh, let me get the IPA chart open and I'll copy that over. Oh, hey, calls back. No, it's not your turn. Um. There we go. Yeah, it's very frustrating to copy and paste things in here.、Uh, no, Colin. No. Yeah. There you go. All right, we're good.、Okay. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Ah,、oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. What if we had、um, a distinction between? Something that's not like super standard, but we had、um, a phonological distinction between different types of sonorants, kind of like in. I'm going back to Irish here, but kind of like the、mm -hmm. the the former,、um, the sort of、uh, what are they called?、Um, the ones that diphthongize vowels before them when they're in co a coda position in in some、oh. varieties of Irish, or lengthen vowels before them. But that's the only other.、Um, That's the only other. That's the only effect they have. Otherwise, they they show up、um, phonetically the yeah, same. Are they different like phonemes stuff? Well, that's kind of the. Yeah. <laughs> the,、uh, yeah. What about a what about a, a ra or a ra? Oh、uh, yeah, yeah, we can have that. Okay. So. Yeah. Which one,、yeah. trill or tap?、Mm. Or. Either, anything goes. I mean,、anything、it is erotic.、Goes. Yeah, basically. Okay, so we have twenty-four, I think here. Um. That's, I think, on the lower end of of big, but. Yeah. Um, we can. We we should probably put in a little cut here for YouTube. I think let people go. Yeah, and, and we get can、there. add on like when yeah as we go. As we go, okay. So that I will go back to the full screen. Say to YouTube、uh, a big thank you for joining us.、Um, Quain, anything to say to YouTube before we sign off? Oh, bye, YouTube. All right, we will see you next time. Okay,、um, I'm going to take a、um, like a thirty second break, splash some water on my face because it's against another hot day.、Um, we'll see where the animation stops. On be right back this time.
Uh, no such luck this time. All right. We are back. All right. So we're getting calls for a recap in the chat. I will do it. Um, we'll do a recap as we start the, the YouTube segment. Um, what's the next thing? We are going to do some some vowels and then we're going to add whatever consonants we, we need. So, um, mm -hmm. Quain, shall we begin the next segment? Yes. All right. YouTube, welcome back. We have been making a new conlang that is tentatively entitled Quat for reasons of, of me making hilarious mistakes yeah, and saying Quain's name. Yeah, go watch the previous video. Yeah, go watch yep. the previous video if you want to see why. Um, yes. But uh, we have basically set out the consonant system already. We know what sort of thing we're aiming for. Now we're going to jump back in and we're going to build up a vowel system uh, for our tones to, to exist on. So over to the side webcam. There we go. Um, I think I'm, I might just move move my camera over here so that everyone can see the little inspiration segment. Um, okay, so as a recap, we have, we're making a language. The inspiration is we want it to be a tonal language. We want it to be a tonal language and we want it to be a tonal language. Specifically, what kind of tonal language? We want contour tones, uh, but relatively mm -hmm. simple ones. So one rising tone, one falling tone, and some level tones. Uh, we want aspiration, which we've which we've included already. We want the syllable to be the tone-bearing unit. We want a lateral fricative, front rounded vowels, a relatively mil minimalistic vowel system with a relatively maximalistic vowel system, which I don't know how much we've succeeded in that so far, but um, <laughs> so far, well, we'll see. We can add some more. Uh, yeah, we can add. A simple syllable structure and some, some morphological processes, be they affixation or something something non-concatenative, who knows, but something, we need something going on to play with. And we have one word in this language, which is the name of the language, uh, which is quat. So there we go. That's uh, essentially the, the recap. Um, so now it's our job to create the vowel system. And we've said so far that we want a minimalistic vowel system that somehow also has a front rounded vowel in it. Mm. So when I yeah. start thinking about minimalistic, I start thinking about five and below. Really, yeah. I think below five would is below, technically yeah, minimalistic. Five. Because five is like the normal amount, right? Right. So, five yeah. is the kind of, that is, um, I don't know statistically exactly if it's, uh, what, what measure of central tendency it falls under, but it's, it's definitely one of them. That is common, yeah. The, the mean, the median, or the mode, or maybe all three, who knows? Um, so less than five. So I think probably four is what we can get away with. Um, yeah. So let's say front, central, back. Um, and if we want front rounded vowels, I think the obvious candidate is U. Yeah, U. Yeah. Um, U, I think, implies E typologically mm. i think that's a fairly robust yeah, generalization say, like yeah yeah like 99 percent. so so uh, U E, and then we need something low ah uh, ah uh, yeah and we need something back Ooh. i think this is pr the most with our constraints this is the vowel system that i would i would come up with hmm I have a su suggestion, actually. Uh, how do you feel about or instead of ooh? Um. Okay. Because I yeah I see a uh, I'm looking at chat right now and I see a lot of or suggestions. See a lot of oh. Yeah. Let's think of a diachronic story that would that would work for this. So if we have e u o a, what mm -hmm. if U fronted to e, had fronted to yeah, e, uh, and that's why mm -hmm. we have this this gap here. I mean, this uh, okay. So the kind of logic that I'm using here, I think, is worth spending some time on, because yeah. there is a tendency, I think, in conlanging and in linguistics to assume that everything that looks not super uh, expected came from something that was earlier, 
much more regular yeah. and expected. So yeah. when we see a, a gap, we reconstruct a language, a, for, a stage of the language that had no gap. And we always assume yeah. that, you know, earlier it was more regular, but earlier it was also a language, right? And languages have these gaps and things like that. Languages are often... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this happens with tone systems too, doesn't it, Quain? Right, yeah, yeah. You got, for example, like, yeah, like um, my Mandarin dialect has four contratones, but before it was level tones. So, and everybody just knows that it was level tones. And so it was, quote unquote, reconstructed with level tones. But, you know, it doesn't necessarily has to be, but uh, have to be, but yeah. Or how we don't, like, how we, we wouldn't reconstruct a, or it's very common to reconstruct a non-tonal ancestor of a tonal language and to have the process right. of tonogenesis yeah. Uh, be something yeah. that we are that we value explaining in a in a, a theory. Um, mm -hmm. I think that where where you can it makes sense to, but uh, I think there's a there's a, a a drive towards having tone systems as being something to explain rather than something that we that we assume. Yeah, I think yeah, personally, it's just a like a strong like non-tonal bias, you know like in linguistics in general, and especially, uh, of course, like linguistics dominant, uh, dominated by Western linguistics, Western academic linguistics these days. But, you know, like um, I, like I studied some things from the traditions of Chinese historical linguistics, and they have a very interesting like linguistic theory. And um, what else, like Sanskrit is very, well theorized as well uh, locally so yeah uh, i mean we yeah we as linguists we should absorb like more from different places i think so. that's that's a, a fascinating thing that i think is under discussed in linguistics the fact that there mm -hmm. are actually traditions of linguistics that are not that 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 the sort of modern um western type of linguistics doesn't yeah. spring from now, of course, the, yeah. there are some influences, especially once you get into the 20th century, from from the um, from the Sanskrit tradition into mm -hmm. modern generative linguistics. That's a thing, but right. um, yeah, but it's Indo-European, so yeah, that's true. That. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a question that actually, you know, not to get off on too much of a tangent here, but it's a question that yeah. I, I see people ask a lot, like what what would linguistics look like if um, it had not emerged in the English speaking world, would right. we still have the same kinds of theories? Yeah, that's especially right. true with morphology. Interesting, yeah. interesting question to ponder. But... Okay, so I think I've gone too far astray because, yeah. <laughs> because, well. you know, we're making a calling, but yeah, we could nerd out. Yeah. Um, I mean, um, that's what okay. we're here for in a uh, way, but so, Galactic yeah. Sand uh, is asking, yeah. um, mm -hmm. oh, great, oh, great tone master, hear our plea. We ask for free variation in o u as what had come before in our forefather classical nahuatl hear our request and do not cast us astray okay i heard i heard it and yeah let's do it okay so we have we have free variation or maybe we have variation i don't know if we want it to be free yeah yeah, yeah. because it could be we could have it contingent on syllable structure so in open syllables we have u and in closed syllables we have o that would be something that hmm. wouldn't shock me at all given uh, that we also want uh, e and a then hmm interesting idea isn't it interesting idea i almost yeah. don't i don't know hmm. i i like this yeah. kind of like asymmetry here it's yeah but i wonder i wonder um let's let's leave that as a question so put that down here as a little question mark um okay okay so this is cool this is a nice vowel system um we have our constant system we have our syllable structure to work out structure so see, so far we have what looks like uh consonants followed by a constant followed by maybe an approximant Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe so, I don't know if, if this is the category we want here. We only have one example. Um, yeah. But something like what or yeah, possibly. 
and the vowel and then um, something at the end, some kind of consonant, whether that's a restricted subset of, of the whole consonant inventory of the language at the end? It must be, yeah. It must be? Uh, right, because, uh, yeah, I mean, typologically speaking, it is not very common to have, um, wait, like in, in those type of languages, it's not common to have uh, aspirated consonants uh, as codas, as far as I know. So, they could pre-aspirate yeah, in the coda. Oh yeah, you know your your that, fave. Yeah, that, that's kind of like a an, a far northwest Europe aerial yeah, phenomenon. Scottish uh, Ga Gaelic thing, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Scottish Gaelic and Icelandic as um, well. Icelandic, yeah, yeah. Um, so we have pre-aspiration, but that's that might I don't know. Well, maybe not. Um, how would I think? How would these things interact with tone or would they they would to some extent i would say yeah because like um we i think we explored it like in previous streams as well like how tones were born right so they were usually born with a disappeared consonant and that got turned into tones right so that if that's the case, you got to make sure that some consonants disappear in the first place. So like, yeah, that in that way, you can't just make every uh, consonant a coda. So that's the logic. Does this also explain the typological correlation that simple syllable structure uh, and tone go hand in hand? More or because less. if yeah. yeah, because if you have a tone system, it must have derived from the loss of some earlier contrasts. And so by losing the contrast, the syllable structure becomes simpler and therefore you get the possibility of having tone. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, if... It could be consonant, it could be vowels, it could be something else, yeah. Okay, but... mm, interesting. So why don't we put then a, a relatively restrictive set of final uh, consonants, of coda consonants. Uh, so we mm -hmm. have pataka, maybe glottal stop as well. Mm. I have an interesting idea. Okay. How about we delete one uh, or two, like from Pataka? So, okay, so let's let's yeah. define a little class here. <laughs> D, the set of consonants okay. that can go into a coda. Yeah, can be on coda. Yeah. And what? Okay, so if you want to delete one, which one do you want to delete? I want to delete P actually. The labial. So only t and k, yeah. Okay. Uh, the labia, yeah. Okay. Um, do we want the glottal in there as well? Mm. You can also, you can kind of concoct a little diachronic story here. Yeah. I mean, the most likely diachronic path is to uh, have per just merge into turtle And that um, doesn't necessarily like entail whether that's a glottal stop or not. I was thinking if we had a glottal in the coda position, yeah, maybe the, the gap would be something like the dental. Um, mm. Oh, actually, uh, K is like by far the, the most common to turn into glottal because the... Um, this, the vicinity, you know, the adjacency of positions. So if we did put a, uh, hmm, put a, uh, maybe, yeah, that could work. Yeah. And mm, some nasals. Yeah. Mana, uh, yeah. Do you want, yeah, do we can, if, okay, so we're doing put a, uh, then maybe just mana. Mm -hmm. No, no, yeah. Um, any fricatives for you in the con in the coda? Hmm. Definitely not ha, huh, right? <laughs> That's gonna be no. Yeah. So, given that the loss of this uh, of s's and h's is such fodder for tonogenesis, maybe we yeah. don't see those in the. Uh... Yeah. Uh, in a synchronic... uh not, not her, but the I can see sir, but sir is 
yeah, a little bit of a stretch because that is very easily like lost. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Maybe what about? Okay, so maybe maybe no fricatives, and then if there are no fricatives, yeah, definitely I can do no with the la or ra. So, la or yeah. ra. So, yeah. What about what and yeah? Mm, either way, uh, do you have a preference? Um, if we do what and yeah, it's going to sound very um, East or Southeast Tiny. Asian. So, yeah. <laughs> so maybe not. Okay. Yeah. So the ra, uh, yeah, makes it sound less Chinese. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. If we get, if we have a, let's. Yeah, it's not it's not erhua. It's not roticization. It's rather a ra, a form ra. Like if we uh, have a type. form like liar, that's not. Oh no one's gonna think yeah. that's <laughs> a variety of Chinese. Liar. Yeah. It's like those commenters on the old Chinese reconstruction videos be like, this is not Chinese, this is Russian. Those those videos are amazing. Has anyone, chat, have you yeah. seen these videos, these old Chinese reconstruction videos? Old Chinese and Proto-Indo-European reconstructions have the same quality that no one really believes. That, like anyone yeah, yeah, actually yeah. spoke like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know why that is. It might be okay. just something. I, I saw some, yeah. Oh, sorry. You, you oh, by all means. Sorry, sorry. No, uh, I saw some love with. Uh, I saw some love for yar. Yar. Yeah. Oh, I have love for yar. Okay, so this is our second word, which is yar. Okay. Um, um some tone. Yes. Okay. So yeah, we've yeah. gone a long way without actually making any tones. So I think we should probably. Do oh that yeah. Now. Yeah. All right. So okay. tones. Tones. What did we say? We said contour. We have a rising mm. tone, a falling tone, and some level tones. Yeah, but that's um. Now that I think of it, is that enough? Well, mm. why, why don't we start there and then see where it goes? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's just make it three levels. Oh no! Now I'm we... gonna have to pronounce the mid, aren't I? <laughs> no, I I'm having mercy on you actually to not make it fall. So. <laughs> okay. So why don't we uh, make some decisions about notation? Because I've I've put in the HML here, but would yeah. it be would it be better to use a different system? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I'm a Chinese linguist, and uh, Chinese linguists usually uh, or in the like just East Southeast Asian like tonal sphere, uh, we generally use a system called five degree notation or uh, Zhao Tong systems, uh, named after the Chinese American linguist Zhao Yuanren. So he's a very like he's a pioneer in Chinese linguistics, um, and he he speak, he's a polyglot. Like he speaks so many dialects and languages. But uh, the other side, um, the he's the one tonal... responsible. Sorry to interrupt. He's the one responsible for the yeah, yeah. Uh, Stone Den poem, the lion eating. Oh poem. yeah, the shi 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 shi. Yeah. That yeah. One. Okay. Um, yeah. Chat. I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll I'll send uh, I'll, I'll I'll put a link in the description afterwards. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Um, so how does the that the that, Java system work? Yeah, the system that we use is basically very simple. Five numbers: one, two, three, four, five, and uh, one is the lowest and five is the highest. So if you have a tone like five five, it's Ah uh, is a high level, which uh, coincidentally is the Mandarin first tone. So right, yeah. So ah, uh, and uh, one one is just ah. Uh, it's a very low uh, level tone. So uh, if I have a two four, pronounce it for me. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, yeah, more or less. So it's a bit tough yeah. without the the sort of. You know, I need someone to come up with a Digital tuning fork. Like, yeah, okay, okay. Da, 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 da. So, okay. <laughs> what key yeah. are we in? <laughs> okay. I'm actually pulling out the uh, IPA, like the visual, more visual representations as well. So, yeah. Yeah, the IPA so, tone um, representation is not very attractive, in my opinion. Yeah. You mean that one or uh, the. That one, yeah. That one. This one. Okay. Yeah. But still, uh, I can ignore it then. 
but like yeah basically it's from uh, lowest to highest so uh if we are using ipa we can like two four is like uh, something like this Yeah, so this is two four, and you can like somehow visually see uh like just the the pitfall of the IPA system is that uh, the bar on the right, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to just ignore that, and uh, the rest is the contour basically. So we have this this delightful system, very clear of of notating tones. When you have a level tone, you write two numbers, um, mm -hmm. which are the same because it's level. If you have a contour tone, yeah. you'll write um, something like two four or five one, which would be like a yeah. falling from high. There to are low. some languages which only use one, uh, one numeral, uh, one number as well, but that's because of a length distinction. So yeah, interesting. Uh, so, interesting. Yeah. Was that like yeah. Cantonese? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cantonese. Okay. Um, cool. And I think you know, there's a cool typological thing to say about this as well, which is that um, there have been. There's been no language found that has that distinguishes more than five level tones, so right. the system yeah, I think is the, perfect. Yeah, the languages like distinguishing five level tones are Mishtak, actually. Yeah, uh, all found in the like Central American area. That's only. It. and that's yeah. interesting because we don't, you know, well, I don't want to say we, but often when you think about tone or you 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 first learn about tone in a phonology class you hear there are two types of tone system the east asian contour type and the mm -hmm. sub-saharan african you know level yeah. type even though yeah. you know there are obviously level tones in in right. east asia there are obviously yeah, yeah, yeah asterisk yeah. Blah, blah 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 large disclaimer but that's the you know the gist of what they of what they tell you um right. but there are tones up in other places too okay cool so all that aside, uh, we have our our notation system. What are we going to? What mm -hmm. tones are we going to have? So we don't need H's and M's and L's; they can go away. Okay. Got that. We, okay. So what do we need? We need. Do we want a high? What? What? First of all, yeah. let's start up with the uh, the level tones. So what level tones do we need? Okay, we set three levels, right? Three levels. So, okay. So three levels, the straightforward option would be five five through three and one one. So you can kind of think of this as analogous to how languages use the yeah, vowel I space. Miss, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Sort of maximizing distinction. Um, right. Yeah, and because you you know, like tone is this relative thing. It's not a strict like you have to reach like how many hertz, right? It's that uh, is within your like comfortable vocal range like two tones so high may be a little bit of stretch the lowest low may be a little bit of a stretch but like in general it should like stay in your like comfortable vocal range so yeah and everyone like thus everyone pronounces it differently so yeah logan's got an interesting comment um that languages vary in the distances between level tones um the example gives us a uh, tlingit, uh, which has less than a half step between the the only two contrasting tones, uh, at least according to hmm, according yeah. to the description. Yeah, interesting stuff. But you know, as a tendency, I think yeah. we can say that that but, that they like to ex really explore the the tonal space. <laughs> yeah, actually, I want to respond to that because I'm a musician, and yeah, I actually tested my uh, Mandarin tone like scape if you know what I mean. And uh, it's about like a fifth to a sixth uh, for those musicians out there. So cool. yeah, that's usually the the range from five to one, basically. Oh, cool. So Good yeah, person. that's very interesting. All right, and then, uh, so so this the system that contrasts only a half step between is only two, it's only two contrast, only two contrastive tones. There, I did it again. Only two contrastive tones, is uh, is is really not making much use of that, uh, of the range. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, okay, so I'm actually yeah curious about that. I'm gonna research about that like after stream. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's do let's do things. Um, so yeah, let's just say five five three three and one one for simplicity. Okay. 
So let's actually, you know what? Let's put the tones over here because my, my face is going to block them otherwise. So <laughs> five, five, three, three, one, one. Um, okay. okay. So these are our level tones. Just remove this so that we don't get distracted. Um, so now we have some more positive, uh, like opportunities or possibilities to have some more varied tones because, you know, you can have a high fall and you can have a low fall. So like that's flavors, that's different flavors of falling and they can be contrasted in many, many languages. So what would be an example? Could you maybe give, give us an example of the distinction between a, a high fall and a low fall? Okay. So a high fall, uh, let's take Hokkien, uh, shall we? Yeah. So a high fall is ah, and a low fall is ah. And which in... a low fall, yeah, sounds like a, a bit of like a low, like, yeah, it's a subtle distinction so... to pick up. Uh, yeah. With so year, but... what would be the, how would we notate this in our um, numbering system? Hmm. That distinction. So a high fall, yeah. Uh, generally, like the Mandarin uh, fourth tone and the Hokkien, uh, that high falling tone is noted as 5 1. So just all the way through, right? Ah. And yeah. That's my tone. Ah. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Um, yeah, like you're, you're scolding someone. Ah. Which is don't. Yeah. But um, like 3 1 is a more subtle. Um, like for ah, so ah. You, you could you could compare it to the uh, the ah of ah. Yeah. I didn't realize ah. you were such a musician. Yeah. Ah versus ah, yeah ah is like a more yeah tiny version of yeah. Cool. And so is that what the uh, Hokkien is? The distinction yeah, is, is it five one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five one three one. I one and three one. It's also notated as like two one or yeah, but basically the same thing. Cool. So a high fall and a low fall. So, we we know we want a falling tone. We know what we want a rising tone. What are the what's mm -hmm. you know the devil's in the details though? What are, what do you propose, Quain, as our, as our high tone, as our as our falling tone and our rising tone? Yeah, I feel like, okay. Um, Let's do a test then. So uh, if I say ah versus ah, is that more or less distinguishable than the falling tone examples? Ooh, okay. Chat, you're going to have to participate in this if I have to. So, so yeah. okay, give- Use your ears, use your music <laughs> if you have one, uh, if you have any, but yeah. Okay, so-, so could you give them again? Okay. So for the two rising tones, they are ah and ah. Okay. In isolation, and, I could pick those out. Okay. And the falling tones are ah and ah. I feel like the falling tone was a bit easier to distinguish. Yeah. Like in general. Yeah. That's, that's the answer I was expecting. But yeah. The rising tones are more, yeah, because when you when you like look at the citation forms uh, uh, of Mandarin's second and third tone, they all have a rising part, right? But the third tone is essentially just low, like people just pronounce it as low, like in speech. So that's not like helping. And a lot of like Mandarin learners, they have much trouble with the, distinguishing the second and third tone because they have a rising. Uh, shared rising part, which is pretty much similar to each other. Mm, interesting. So, yeah, yeah. So I personally, yeah, I agree with you that I find uh, falling tones, the high fall versus low fall, more distinguishable than the high rising versus low rising. So what if we took that, in that um, that insight and used it to mm -hmm. in in this language to give us two falling tones of one rising? Yeah. How about that? Sounds good. So we have like a yeah. five one, like Hokkien, a five yeah. one, a three one, maybe. Five one and three one. Uh, I saw another suggestion uh, by Logan that five three versus three one, which is a, a bit 
yeah, a bit more difficult, I would say. So five three is like ah, uh, it you just stop in the middle, and versus three one ah. Uh, you know what's interesting? When, yeah. Go ahead. I, I'm trying to figure out how to formulate this, but in in at least I'll say my variety of English, all of these contours still exist. They're just not given this. They're not they're not made to do the the duty of phonemes. They right, are, yeah, you exactly, know, yeah. like if I said to someone, um, if someone asked me, how are you? And I was like, good, good. You know, yeah. it's different than good. These, these, yeah. We, yeah. We, we have, what I'm trying to express is that even though I'm not a native speaker of a language that makes, that uses tone, the raw ingredients of tone are still available to me. Right, it's like yeah, uh, rising tones are also like ubiquitous. What? That's a rising tone, right? Yeah, you yes. use rising tones as question. Yeah, right. Or you know, you can you can get at so many of these little these little nuances just from. I think I you know correct me if I'm wrong, Queen, but I think my example of good versus good, you know, th yeah, is that five three versus I don't know. Three, yeah, three, three one, one maybe. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. That sounds like a more like a five three versus three one situation. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, yes, they are hard for us to distinguish, but you know, at least me, I can distinguish <laughs> when yeah. I have to. Um, and I say, you know, so, the us yeah. there was uh, people uh, who don't speak tonal languages natively. Uh -huh. um, yeah, yeah. Okay, you, you, yeah, you can relate to it somehow. There must be some like paralinguistic tonal elements. Because stress is partially tone, like right. Yeah. So that's know if you know, we'll this, know that. Like, this yeah. gets into the, this gets into the debate about pitch accent a little bit. But all oh, right. Yeah. You know, I think maybe it would be less controversial. To, less controversial to say stress is 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 partially pitch. Oh, pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's that's really the acoustic. Okay, I'm 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 not an I'm not a phonetician, but this is what we're, this is the correlate here. Yeah. Okay. Um, into some deeper territories, but yeah, yeah, it, get, it <laughs> okay. gets murky, but but um, that's not our purpose here today. Is to to murk the waters up. We're here to clear the waters up. So, um, let's okay. let's put in our two falling tones. Mm -hmm. So let's do five one and three one. Okay. So uh, for now, yeah. five one and three one, and then we want a rising tone. Mm, whatever yeah just two four maybe two yeah. four okay so i'm gonna try i'm gonna try and say all of these mm -hmm. so ah 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 how did i do mm. your your low falling one is the one that's a little bit shaky but a little dodgy the rest are fine. yeah okay ah uh, ah uh, is that low falling ah uh. Ah, uh, 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 ah. Uh. Yes, more or less. More or less. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, we we can all use some sandy. Uh, oh, uh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Yeah. Did I hear the uh -oh. S word? <gasps> the forbidden S word. Yeah. <laughs> that's, okay. That's gonna come. Yeah. Well, maybe it's time for a little cut then. Um, yeah. For YouTube, we've come up with our tone system. Uh, we've come up with our notation of tone system. We've gone on tangents about tone and all manner of other things. Um, right, as linguists do. As yeah, this is what happens. You get two linguists in yeah. a room, and yeah. Well, you've seen what happens. YouTube, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we will see you next time. Uh, Quay, would you like to to give uh, YouTube the old farewell? Mm -hmm. Farewell, YouTube. Bye. All right, we will see you next time, YouTube. Ha. Huh. Okay, cool. Um I think I my I'm not overheating at the moment, so I don't think I need to Quain, do you need uh, to stretch your legs, take a breather? Um uh, yeah, I would I could use some hydration. Okay, so, let's yeah. hydrate, take a quick hydration break and be back in about a minute.
Okay, we are back. We are back. Quain, are we back? Yeah, we're back. We're back. Hello, everyone. Okay, so I think what we need to do is make some words and then play with what happens when these words come together. What happens when tones, yeah. when tones meet? All right, so that's our, our little plan chat. We are going to go into it. What we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll jump right in. We'll do the third segment on, you know, making words and some, some tone Sunday. And then I think at the end, we'll just do a little, little chill chat and we can talk back and forth. And yeah, I think that's a pretty decent plan. All right. Uh, let's say hi to YouTube. YouTube. Welcome back. We have Quain here. Quain is here. Say hi, Quain. Hello, YouTube. And we're about to jump right back into our tonal extravaganza. So let's let's do it. Let's scoot over to the side webcam. What's happened so far? A little recap. We have uh, we've made this this little sketch of a language so far. It has uh, well, it has the constant system you can see on screen, the vowel system you can see just below it, and it has um, we we contrast six tonal categories. We have a high level tone, a mid level tone, a low level tone. We have a high falling tone. We have a, a, what do we want to call this? A low falling tone, a mid falling tone? Yeah, a uh, low falling tone. A low yeah, falling basically. tone. And then we have a rising tone. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time to make some words. We have a few. We have actually a couple, two words. Um, we have quat, which is the name of the language. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of want a uh, liar yeah, to be a greeting, actually. Okay, this is a greeting. Yeah, so I can I can say yar YouTube instead of hello. Yar. Okay. Well, yeah. I think we need to figure out what tones these. Uh, these oh words yeah. Have. Yeah, because so far we are like inherently pronouncing it as a falling tone because yeah. that's what English does. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, yeah. Okay. So then, is it just a matter of picking a tone out of a hat? Yeah, just feels, vibes, you know. All right, what vibes are you getting for uh, for our greeting word? I'll just try and say it neutrally. Yar. Try and just Yar. three that. Yeah, I, I will have a three three if you don't mind. I don't mind. Yar. Three three? Yeah. Yar. Pretty casual. Yar. All right, and then. The name of the language, we have to assign a tone to this. Okay. That should be something fancy. So uh, either falling or rising. You pick. Mm, rising. Rising. Okay. So <gasps> quat, quat is the name of the language. Yeah. Okay. Quat. All right. So then maybe we should make a, a little slight teensy weensy decision about basic word order. Uh, so that we can uh, make a like, make a sentence and see what happens when tones collide. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have the name of the language of a greeting. We don't really have much else. Let's let's do a few words and then think about word order. So let's get some yeah. some of the core words that any language needs. Oh dear, yeah. <laughs> of course. Right. Um, oh, and. Uh, Maybe eat. Yeah. Well, some other, yeah. Um, that'll give us enough to make a few sentences. Oh yeah, the the owl uh, eats the stew. The owl eats the stew. Yeah. The chicken eats the soup. Yeah. All right. I think that's good. So, um, let's let's go. Let's make some let's make some words. I think we should make owl and chicken um a little bit iconic yeah um because it's Are always fun doing the the quack theme or i think so i think we should you know we don't have to make it exactly the same as the yeah. sakrat language word but i think we should have um okay something can... that sounds chickeny something that sounds yeah um maybe something like Hmm. Something like key uh, or 
I don't know. What is it? I haven't heard chickens lately. All I can think of are the, the chicken noises on Arrested Development. I don't know. I don't know if that's a reference anyone will get. Um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of imitating of chickens in very, very inaccurate ways on that show. Hmm. Well, I think owl should be something like or hot oh yeah that's pretty iconic yeah, yeah. right yeah hot. hot um okay and chicken so hmm oh i i think i've made a an assumption here and i don't know if it's a good one maybe it's something we should talk about is i just made everything okay. one oh. syllable Ah, uh, yeah, I, I've seen some two syllable uh, suggestions, actually. But so maybe I, we should put some of those in. Yeah, I saw chicken as mbiki, someone suggested that. Mbiki? Or mbiki? mbiki. Or, yeah, we, we didn't uh, actually decide our, well, our uh, allophonic rules. Okay, we should do so, that then. I think basically yeah. nasals and coda um pre I stop in um, onset uh, yeah yeah what that do you think sense. about that yeah that's the most logical and easy okay solution. so, so yeah. we have mb mm. mbiki like that yeah and what kind of tones do we need so if yeah so mbiki that could work Mbiki. So, yeah. Just like, yeah, mbiki. So Which, five, five, yeah, one, one. Is that? Am I yeah. perceiving those correctly? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Mbiki. All right, we got some good stuff from the chat coming in. Um, oh yeah. Uh, echoed word says oh, yeah. Yeah. for, or rather, um, plu. For stew, three one. Plu, plu. Hmm. Is plu sounding more like stew or stew? That's a question. Oh, this is going to be controversial. Mm. <laughs> Echoed words has put it in for for stew, so I think we should. Uh, I okay. think we should go along yeah. with that. Yeah, I can. Uh... If I twist my mind a bit, I can get behind that, but <laughs> I'm a soup person, you know. Well, so. I think, well, then make the, then make the word for soup be something even more glorious than flu. Okay. I think you're just basically envious of the awesome word we have for stew. Oh, yes. Very. So, um, it should have, um, soup. Maybe also with u then, um, Let's see. Who? Like the SH. Is that it? Yeah. Sounds SHY 55. Five. There we go. See, it almost sounds like it's related to English. <laughs> Soup. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, it's not. But yeah, that, that was not my inspiration, where my inspiration came from at all. It was just, yeah, soup is, I I was trying to like immerse myself into the, you know, the You're trying to commune on like the, the level of the platonic idea of, of soup. Yeah, I tried to VR soup, like just in that moment. So, yeah. All right. Um, Galactic Sand is suggesting something like nyam for eat. Yeah, that works. Like what? a lot, uh, just a lot of nasals in general for eat because that sounds yeah. like eating. Yeah. Um, tone? Which tone? Uh, yeah. Keep in mind uh, that, you know, as we're, we're about to yeah. do some fun with Sunday and you're going to have 5-5 five, five, and 3-1 after it. If you're interested in showing anything, you may want to consider that and the tone that you, that you add to Nyam. Yeah, but we can twitch about with the like uh sunday rules right so mm -hmm. if like 
we we feel like this word needs some spiciness we can just add it we can also add a second syllable to it yeah uh so galactic sand said uh one one all right yum. then one one it shall be okay so we have we have a bunch of words here we need to make a little sentence i think mm -hmm. um and if we're going to make a sentence we need a basic word order now i do not know that there is anything at all um to say about correlations between word order and uh tone yeah it's like a correlation it's very yeah but it's an aerial feature rather than uh, uh, like fixed there's nothing related. about the nature of tone yeah, that yeah. says no, you must, no, no, no. The, the mystical forces of tone are conspiring to make you svo although like most east and south asian, uh, east asian tonal languages happen to be svo but that's like that's just coincidence in my opinion i think we should um we should look at walls just briefly here to show oh yeah um, what we mean about the aerial nature of, of tone. Mm -hmm. So let's go find tone. Okay. So we are now looking at a map of the world um, where we have three values of the uh, four tone as they're um, coded in walls. White is no tone. Uh, pink is a simple tone system and red is a complex tone system. And... Mm. Um, yeah, uh, how they draw the line between what's a simple and what's a complex tone system is not, well, you know, it could be debated, yeah, fuzzy, you know, but, yeah. you know, I think we know the gist of what they're talking about. Um, complex, more tones, contour tones, things like that. Um, at least I think that's what they, they did in this chapter. I'd have to yeah. have to refresh it, but um, I think that's the gist of it. Yeah. And so looking at this, we can see on the world map um, that tone kind of, hangs out in particular areas it hangs right. out a lot in um southeast asia and it hangs mm -hmm. out a lot in sub-saharan africa and it's here and there uh in other parts of the world there are some clusters in the americas here and there central america has a little bit of a cluster um and then the rest of eurasia basically has almost nothing no tone yeah except uh scandinavia and latvia yeah so nor so, well uh, you know, interestingly yeah, don't, don't walls puts norwegian walls codes norwegian rather than swedish uh, so, yeah. and latvian there um uh i think punjabi would also be there as well yeah punjabi is there yeah I um i don't i don't see it on the the map but i know it i know what's in there um yeah. so yeah tone is, is heavily associated with certain parts of the world, these kind of tonal hotspots. Uh, we talked about hotspots when we were talking about geology, but uh, here, here are some hotspots that I feel a little bit more comfortable talking about. Yeah, um, here's some subduction zones. Yeah, yeah, tonal subduction. <gasps> tonal subduction zones. What is that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. We can, we can actually do that, right? Okay. Just, I'm good. No. No, we're not going to do that. But <laughs> but imagine you had like a tone system where the Sandy worked like a subduction zone where the tones came up against each other and then made one tone lift as it went under. Oh, wouldn't that be cool? Oh, yeah, there are some. Yeah. So are you okay. saying that tonal so, subduction so zones are Sandy real? Sandy rules are just subduction zones. Yeah. Like, no. okay. Yeah, okay. basically. Okay. All right. So let's make our, uh, all that to say, we need to come up with the word order. Um, and yeah. someone stopped me from making SVO. Is anyone going to stop me? I'm going to, yeah, I'm not going to stop you, but, uh, because SVO is just convenient, you know, but like, and it's common. So like you, you can justify it easily, but like, mm, what are some of the, yeah, it's just SOV, VSO, the like possibilities. Okay. Well. We just did VSO, so why don't we do SOV? Yeah. Uh, because we've already, had tonal, yeah. we've already had a tonal yeah. language with um, v yeah. uh, SVO. Um, yeah. So SOV. 
So then let's make a sentence. Owl eat soup. Chicken. No, no, this is wrong. Owl eats stew. Chicken eat soup. All right, this is going to be. Um, we're not going to put any morphology on these uh, yet. Yeah. Just yet, but yeah. We, we will, I think, but for now. Yeah. All right. So then let's. So then, of course, the the free translation. Um, uh, the owl eats stew. The chicken eats soup. This is very Duolingo vibes, I have to say. <laughs> oh yeah. So we're we're not learning Indonesian today. But yeah. Instead of learning Kwat. Yeah, learning quat. These these are the sentences you get. So, um, how are we gonna say this? Okay, so, uh, hold. Yeah, you can copy and paste. I'll copy and paste. Can... You speak. Yeah. <laughs> hold, uh, stew, right? Hold, stew. Yeah. Yum. Stew, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I I ha I'm having a hard time distinguishing low and low falling. Oh my god. Um, flu flu nyam. Yeah, that sounds more like it. Okay. So, hot flu nyam. Yeah, that's like a like a falling down sentence basically. Yeah. Hot. Yeah. Flu, flu nyam. nyam. Yeah. Falling to the ground. That's tough. And um, Vicky. Okay, Vicky. Two yum. Oh, <laughs> this is gonna be hard to pronounce. Oh my god. Did somebody okay. did somebody order something that would make tonal contours placed next to each other a little bit easier to pronounce? Yeah. All right. So what, Quain? Do you do you dare say the full sentence? All together, and then we can go in and find the spots that we might want to introduce some mm -hmm. changes. Hot yum, Vicky yum. That's my best attempt, which is not bad. That sounds really cool. Yeah. All right. So, Sunday. For those who have not encountered this word before, you may be surprised to see its spelling. Um. This is the this is alterations in sounds when they come into contact with um, uh, alterations in sounds at the edge edge of words when they come into contact with with other words. Right. Basic. Just basic. Ba uh, yeah. Basically, two tones coming together and they have some chemistry. Right. That's so. My so originally. Rigid definition. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll traffic in very very loose definitions. I think today, original yeah. originally Sunday referred to um, segmental changes that occurred mm -hmm. at the at word boundaries, um, but then it got extended to refer to um, uh, Sunday of tone uh, when right. when when tones come together. So tone sandy is what we're going to introduce now. What are some mm -hmm. types of tone sandy that that occur, uh, Quain? Do they generally mm, take any it. shape, or or is it basically anything goes? Yeah, that's a very broad question because uh, that's exactly my area of study, coincidentally. But yeah, uh, so sandy, like I mean, you can classify them in different ways. Um, so by direction, you can come from the left. So like the leftmost thing doesn't change and um, the subsequent things change. That's called left dominant. And uh, so right dominant is obviously the opposite direction where the rightmost things uh, doesn't change. The rightmost thing, the single things uh, doesn't change and the left, the things left of that changes. And um, Again, my dialect is being a monster here, and we have bidirectional in different contexts. So that's just ridiculous. Anyway. Do I have this right? Um, so in left dominant, if you have category A, B, that would go to category A, C. Mm -hmm. And right dominant would be A, B going to C, B. Yeah. And that C uh, is interesting because that C can be another tone in the system. But it can also be like just something else, 
which is very curious because like yeah languages do do that they generate even more even new tones in sandhi context now is that also true in segmental sandhi i'm trying to think of any examples oh yeah um well like it is consonant mutation a, a sort of a sandhi is it if you sort of think of i mean yeah. it's it's like a morphologized relic of sandhi um right yeah but that like yeah if not for them like some phonemes just don't exist right i'm wondering if because the examples of constant so okay take constant mutation mutation to the side i'm wondering if there is a if it's true that segmental sandhi mm -hmm. creates segments that are not otherwise found in the inventory I actually don't yeah, know the answer to I that don't know, question. Actually, yeah. Because if that's the if, case, then that would be a major difference between tone sandhi and, and other kinds of sandhi. Yeah. We, we don't care about that today, but that's that's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, that is interesting because, uh, okay, I'm going academic right now. So Kipaski have a, have a uh, has a paper about, like, um, so structural um, changing uh, structure changing versus structure preserving uh, phonological changes. Yeah. So if yeah, if uh, the C is a tone in the in the original system, it um, it should be structure preserving because you are preserving the structure by just shifting um, your tone into another tone. But um, if you're creating a new thing, your structure changing. So that's a very interesting distinction. And apparently languages can do both uh, with regards to tone. So Yeah. That's an interesting that's an interesting kind of uh, distinction that I think is probably not that widely known outside of um, outside of like phonological theory. Right, yeah. Strong structure preserving and non structure preserving um, operations. Cool. Anyway, um, that aside. Um, yeah. So, so that aside. That is, yeah. That aside. Um, okay. So yeah, basically, like you can sandy to whatever. There's literally no rules. Of, I mean, cross linguistically, there's virtually no rules of like governing which can be sandied and which can not be. And the sandi de uh, product, like there's also just like no rules about like what they can be. So basically, we can go free is what I'm saying. Are there tendencies regarding what kinds of things are subject to sandi? For example, do things generally become more like each other or less like each other? Is there assimilation oh, and dissimilation, like there is oh, in segmental? Uh, yeah, both are very apple. Like I can just like, yeah, quote examples of both. So like some languages, it depends on, you know, the, the phonological like quirks, like some languages just love one thing. Like some languages have diphthongs and they just love diphthongs and triphthongs, but some languages tend to just like monophthongize them. So that that's um like you can't say which one is uh favorable right so they're both I on guess the menu that, yeah yeah they're both on the menu so i i think the uh tonescape is sort of similar in that way like it they're both on the menu and it depends on the there are languages that do assimilation and and dissimilation so so an example of uh, a language whose tone sandy uh is dissimilatory in nature would mm -hmm. be Mandarin, right? Uh, you mean the three plus three example, right? Mm -hmm. So the yeah. So in yeah, because they are they are too similar to each other, so that's why. So this is nature. this is kind of analogous to in segmental phonology when you have like an L and an R coming next to each other, or an L and an L oh, coming yeah. next to each other. One might go to an R. Mm -hmm. um, note that they don't have to be exactly next to each other for this to. For this to happen so you yeah. get um you know like like in 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 latin you have um 
the alice um, suffix, which if it's attached to something with an R in the root, um, oh, sorry, wait, other way around. Uh, if you just touch something with an L in the root, then you get Aris. Uh, I see. Like, yeah. Man, uh, the, the example came to my mind is uh, uh, Spanish Audible, right? Right, right. So this. Yeah, it should be Audible instead of Audible, right? If I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, yeah. Arbor. Yeah. Arbor, going to Arbol. Um, yeah. That's a good ex uh, historical example of dissimilation, whereas this is a, yeah. a synchronic example mm -hmm. of dissimilation. Um, okay, yeah. cool. So there's dissimilation, there's assimilation. Um, are there other kind of specifically tonal things like smoothing out rapid changes in direction? Yeah. So there's a general trend. Yeah, we're, we're not getting into that territory today, not necessarily. But if you have an overly complex um, total contour in its citation form, which is the one, like just one syllable on its own. Like it can pronounce, uh, it can be pronounced as ah or ah, and these tones are just like too annoying uh, to say it quickly, right? So there's, so, a, like, there's a constraint yeah. that's don't be annoying. <laughs> More or less. Start uh, I mean, yeah, that annoying is my personal opinion. <laughs> then you can have, yeah, like other take on it. But, um, like they're just too um, extra. Star so, extra. So, yeah, extra. So, so like, yeah, <laughs> just don't be too extra. For example, like the citation form of Mandarin third term is ah, uh -uh, which is like something like two one four in textbooks usually, right? And that is is a uh, citation form which is annoying and extra. So, so it's banned by the constraint star extra star. By right. the way, Chad, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is uh, this is a a constraint. Um, you know, if you are familiar with optimality theory, that you'll be laughing right now, or maybe not. Um, otherwise, <laughs> you'll just be sort of like, what are they doing? Uh, which is also fine. Uh, I'm violating star extra right now myself. So let's let's move on and actually come up with some tone sandy here. Okay. Um, all right, so yeah. I, I'll, I'm, I'm passing the mic to you here, Quain. What what's what's our first tone Sunday rule? Hmm. Um, I'm gonna ask you. Uh, do you want to be assimilatory or dissimilatory in general, like the tendency of the language? I am feeling contrary, so let's say dissimilatory. Okay, dissimilatory, right? So we want to uh, just basically just kill all the um, two similar ones right mm -hmm. so yeah do we have any example of hmm we actually in our sentence uh, sentence we uh, don't actually really have two of the same tones together so that's... we don't have the same tonal categories the same tonal contrast oh, but we do yeah, have the same but... tones three one and okay. one one yeah, three one and one one. So interesting. Yeah. So if I were to go about it, I can see it turning into three three and one one to be dissimilar, right? So instead of hot hu nyam, it would be yeah. hot hu nyam. Okay. Hot yeah. hu nyam. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I, have, I have to like really go slowly. I'm like walking on a tightrope or something. Uh. Yeah. Okay, so that's something we could do. So we could do three one 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 two three three one one. I think we've mm -hmm. got some some suggestions from the chat too. Um, do you have the chat up, Queen? Do you want me to read it out? Yeah. Uh, you can read. Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking at echoed words suggestion uh, five one three one. Uh, Going to go to five one two four. So having the mm. the two fallings so in yeah in um, quick succession. Okay, so five one three one goes to uh, what's your okay that goes to five one two four. You said yeah, that's uh, that's coming from echoed words in the chat. Okay, yeah, I like that actually. Uh, wait, so okay, 
So here's the thing: is、uh, turning up to be bidirectional right now? Do we want that? Okay. If you know, right? You, yeah. This, because, yeah. This might complicate things. Right. So if, yeah, I I think we did a a right dominant one, right? In、um, the don't remember Sasu maybe.、Mm-hmm. I think right? so. Right. So. I think so. I yeah. <laughs> if we can take the, um. Take the、um, uh, suggestion from Echo Words, and so we can change the second one. So three one 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 can turn into, huh? Three one. Three three is that different enough? Or three one three one. Three, three one three one is the same, ish. But it, it's it's the、okay. same contour, but it's dissimilating at the boundaries. Ah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, that can work. If, yeah, or just turning it into another two four. I'm, like, I'm okay with that also. So, is it the case that you have some languages that like to just that have one kind of thing that's the target of yeah 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 multiple、like、one. Yeah, dominant, like quote unquote dominant tone. So, like, for example, Cantonese just loves its rising tones. Like it just turns everything into rising. So, that's that. So I mean, both uh three one three one and three one like something else can work two four if we like. It just depends on the aesthetic that we're going for. Okay, so let's let's try saying some different ones and seeing what we like better.、Yeah. Um, so we're talking about first of all five one three one going to five one two four. So hot instead of hot shi, we、mm-hmm. have hot shi. Yeah, it did a little bit of squiggle there, but the, hot shi. Hot yeah. shi. Yeah. My brain is too fried to figure out whether any of this is making sense. <laughs> okay.、Um, I like the two rules that we have down here right now,、mm-hmm. but I'm wondering how they、yeah. interact. Because oh yeah, because we have a five one three one 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 situation, right?、Mm-hmm. Exactly. So yeah. So based on our two rules, we can see we can generalize, right? That. Our language is left dominant、uh, at this point. Okay,、Correct. so left dominant.、Mm-hmm. So the left, so left most tone is preserved. Yeah, dominant. Yeah, basically means preserved, inert to sandy or yeah, whatever. So,、um, yeah. So five one shouldn't change. In other words, right, right, because it's the left most thing. It's literally the left most thing. So, if five one doesn't change. We can have the second three one triggering or not triggering, right? If you know, yeah,、uh, what I meant by that. So five one three one 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 can turn into five one two four one one, and、um, it's fine, right? Like based on our rules, because we don't have any specific rules. Uh, regarding two four, so it prevents the application of the rule、uh-huh. of this second rule. So if we say this is rule A and this is tone sandy、mm-hmm. rule B,、um, the fact that A applies first prevents the application of B. Right. Right. Yeah,、um, that's one option. So a second option is just treating like A and B as the like yeah B can. Wait, yeah, it's independent or like, yeah, the so three one 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 can still turn into three one three one, but、uh, since the first three one is already turned into two four, so we have something like five one two four three one. As and the so then、order. you get this situation. So say we have this. So let's just write the tone numbers down here. So five one.、Yeah. Three one two four is oh so five one three one 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 is the underlying tones, and、right. then we have the option of doing five one two four one one. 
So this is the application mm -hmm. of rule A only. Yeah. The other option is 513111 um, going to 512431, which is the yeah. application of A and B. But mm -hmm. it's a bit weird because it doesn't look like B should have applied when you only look at uh, the first two. Yeah. 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 Which, that, I mean, that, that yeah. happens. That happens. That's yeah. opacity, that baby. That absolutely happens because, yeah, I know cases where that happens. And it's fascinating, right? Because the trace, the like remnant of uh, one tone can still, like the underlying thing can still like trigger stuff. Yeah. Which is really cool. It's yeah. really cool. And the real, you know, for those playing along at home, that's a real challenge for, for phenologists uh, right. of, a, of a particular yeah, stripe anyway. Opaque. Yeah. yeah. So this it's is kind of, yeah. technically opacity. You're learning lots of fun, fun words uh, today. But I think we're coming kind of close to the end of our time. I know time right. flies yeah. when you're, you're making tones. Right. I, I still, I, I didn't have, have enough. I wanted to develop this. But definitely. Yeah, but. We'll, we'll get you back on. We'll develop this further. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll we'll make it. Yeah. But let, let's say goodbye to YouTube for now, and then we'll we'll hang around in the chat for a few minutes and and uh, and talk a bit with them. So hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're missing out because you know you don't get these cool little asides uh, in in the uh, interim. But but don't feel too bad, YouTube, because you can come watch us stream uh, anytime. Just uh, you know, mm -hmm. click the old uh, bell, and it'll let you know. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Quain, would you like to say a few words to YouTube by way of farewell? Yar. 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 Oh, right. no. Yar. I pronounced that wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> yar. Uh, yar is the, the greeting. Yeah. Right. It's the, it's the palatal lateral. Yar. Oh, no. Yar. Um, yar, YouTube. Which basically means bid eye. Uh, so we oh, will yeah. see you next time if, if you haven't had to oh. fill of our nonsense. Um, until mm -hmm. then, YouTube. <sighs> okay, that was awesome. Quain, thank you so You're much welcome. for coming on on the stream. You're this, is, welcome. this is a lot yeah. of fun. My pleasure as well. I, I, am, I don't even believe that, that two hours have, have gone by like that. Yeah, it's really quick, yeah. Um, Chad, is there anything you wanted to uh, to say to Quain before we uh, we we log off? Any uh, any questions for the Tone Master General? Quain, you've been given a promotion. You're all the way up to General now. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I can't see. Okay. Yeah, that was great. This was nice. Thank you. Thank you all. It's so awesome having someone come on with, with, with such a deep knowledge of, of, um, of a particular phenomenon. I haven't mm -hmm. looked into tone too much. Um, my, my tone creds are, my tone credentials are that I attended a, a summer institute class with uh, Larry Hyman, um, ah, like yeah. twelve years I ago, know, <laughs> yeah, um, which was great, and it made me. It it definitely left an impression on how to think about, um, how to think about, carving up, linguistic phenomena out there. The the words mm -hmm. we use, you know, is tone yeah. a thing? Is pitch accent a thing? Also, yeah, and what is phonology in general? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah Larry Hyman famously does not think pitch accent is a thing um so who was it was it Logan who said uh pitch accent's a scam definitely not the only one who thinks that yeah I would interpret it uh interpret it as like something in between so yeah um oh uh okay so we do have one question uh from Kobe okay. O'Brien, does phonation always interact with tone? We didn't talk about phonation today. That's probably oh, something, yeah, we something didn't. for next yeah. time. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. But the question from Kobe is, can you have independent phonation and pitch systems? I think yes. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Uh, but like, uh, it reminds me of Maya, to be honest, because Maya, like Maya languages, they have a lot of interesting phonations, right? They have like murmurs, like breathy and creaky and all that, like good jazz, as you said, as you say. And so I guess I do say that. Like, yeah. Um, so I, I, I mean, like, yeah, maybe look into that. But I, Maya languages also have tones. So I'm not 
entirely sure how they interact with each other. But there are like plenty of examples, for example, Vietnamese, Burmese, uh, these are languages with what we call register tones, which are like phonation plus tone. Like the, the phonation is like somehow embedded, somehow included in the in the tones themselves. So in Vietnamese, you got this like um, broken, like quote unquote broken uh, rising tone. Ah, ah. Yeah, that is a thing. So that is a phonation plus a tone, basically. So yeah. And so they sometimes come, they come together as like one phonological category in that. Yeah, case. like a package. Yeah. Um, Echoed words is pointing out um, the Mandarin third tone um, phonation. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It usually have uh, has creak, but it's not. Uh, yeah, not necessarily. There's a lot of like phonetic stuff done on that, which cool. yeah. If you're if you're interested, you can. Yeah, chat if you're interested. You can go. This is like an introduction, actually, to tone world because like it's unfamiliar territory to a lot of you. So, yeah, I think it's I, a lot I of hope, it's unfamiliar to a lot of phonologists yeah. too. Yeah, 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 yeah. As I was saying, uh, previous, like before the stream, that um, just most non-tonal phonologists won't even know like what what we're doing. So, yeah, cool. Cool. Well, um, speaking of Mayan, there will be an opportunity in the not so distant future to uh, oh, yeah. delve in depth into Mayan stuff, but I won't say too much more about that yet. Um, just, you know, I want to fan the flames of your anticipation for that. Um, otherwise, um, come back Thursday, everyone. We're going to be uh, we're going to be having a, another chill uh, Duolingo stream and um, you know, we'll see what we can see there. But uh, everyone give the Queen a big thank you for coming on. This has been fantastic. I've just imagined everyone think, thank you, Queen. You know, that, that, that's what's Aww. happening. Um, You're welcome. Yeah. And then otherwise, we'll have Queen on again. But until next time, chat, bid I. Bid I. Yar. Yar. <laughs> <laughs>